The Right Reverend Robert C. Wright is the 10th Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta, which covers 114 communities in North and Middle Georgia. Prior to his election as Bishop, he served as Rector of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Atlanta, as a school chaplain and on the staff of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. Bishop Robert Wright believes the church is beyond brick and mortar and actively lends his voice and his feet to issues that impact the wider community. He works for those who are hungry, homeless, disabled, rejected, and lost. Bishop Wright includes all at the Holy Table, demonstrating we all are children of the one God. He reminds us that the climax of prayer is action, not amen. During Holy Week, when Episcopal clergy and laity meet to renew their baptismal and ordination vows, Bishop Wright has invited religious leaders from other traditions to preach. In 2016, Wright arranged to have the Holy Week renewal service held at the temple and the sermon delivered by the temple's senior rabbi, Peter Berg. In 2017, the Holy Week Renewal Sermon was delivered by ISB's own Sumaya Khalifa. Bishop Wright is married to Dr. Beth Sarah Wright, and they have a grown daughter and four school-age children. Bishop Robert C. Wright's clarion call for a more just and inclusive world is loud and clear. And for being a visionary leader, a strong voice for justice, and for bringing people of different faiths and walks of life together for a better world, the Islamic Speakers Bureau of Atlanta honors Bishop Robert C. Wright with the 2017 Building Bridges Award. Good evening to all of you. <laughs> Let me say uh, first that I greet you uh, this evening in the name of the God that we know by many names. I greet you in the name of Yahweh who is almighty. I greet you in the name of Allah who is merciful and I greet you in the name that I personally know best, Jesus of Nazareth. Let me say congratulations uh, to my co-honorees. Uh, I'm honored to be included with such a distinguished bunch of folks. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, I wouldn't be on this stage and be before you uh, if it weren't for the fact that when I reached out my hand uh, as a Christian, uh, there was a Jewish hand reaching back at me uh, in the person of Peter Berg or a Muslim hand reaching back at me in the, in the hand of uh, Plemon uh, El Amin or uh, in our own beloved Sumaya's hand reaching out to me and also lending her voices as a preacher. Let me say that my daughter uh, asked me this afternoon how I felt about receiving this honor. And uh, in the, the, the tussle of the afternoon, uh, I don't think I gave her a very adequate answer, and she's here at table 27. Uh, <laughs> so, so here's my attempt at an answer, Sila. I'm grateful to be recognized by the ISB as someone who could be called a bridge builder. Anything I have done thus far or taught thus far in this regard is because of my understanding of who God is. You see, it's my understanding of Jesus of Nazareth that puts me beside lots of different kinds of people, not above them. Let me say in the words of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, when we meet as human beings, we have so much in common. Our first task in every encounter is to comprehend the personhood of the human being. To meet a human being is a major challenge of mind and heart. I must recall, in that instance, what I normally forget. A person is not just a specimen of a species, he or she is all of humanity in one. And whenever one is hurt, we are all injured. The human is a disclosure of the divine, this I believe. And all men and women are one in God's care. 
Many things on earth are precious. Some are holy, but I believe humanity is holy of holies. To meet a human being is an opportunity to sense the image of God, the presence of God. And according to one interpretation of scripture, the Lord said to Moses, whenever you see a trace of humanity, there I stand before you. So then, the purpose of religious communication among human beings of different commitments is mutual enrichment and enhancement of respect and appreciation rather than the hope that the person spoken to will prove to be wrong in what he or she regards as sacred. Religion is neither to flatter nor to refute one another, but to help one another to share insight and learning, to cooperate in academic ventures on the highest scholarly level, and what is even more important, even more important, is to search in the wilderness for wellsprings of devotion, for treasures of stillness, for the power of love and care for all humanity. What is urgently needed are ways of helping one another in the terrible predicament of here and now by the courage to believe the word of the Lord endures forever. And that word is love and justice. To cooperate in trying to bring about a resurrection of sensitivity, a revival of conscience, to keep alive the divine sparks in our souls, to nurture openness to the spirit and reverence for the words of the prophets and faithfulness to the living God. Together, you and I, here in this place and beyond this place, we are adventurers to the heights of humanity and to the depths of God. Religion is a means, not an end. It becomes idolatrous when regarded as an end in itself. Over and above all beings stand the creator, stand before the creator who is the Lord of history, the one who transcends all. To equate religion and God is idolatry. Does not the all-inclusiveness of God contradict the exclusiveness of any particular religion. The fate of all people are intertwined. The world is watching, and our children and our grandchildren are listening. That is my answer, Sila. Horizons are wider than we can possibly imagine. Religions have to give up the notion of self-sufficiency. We are radically intertwined. This is the will of the patient genius that we call God. Thank you.